嗯，好歌，各位观众，由于《寻路者传奇》我们玩完了，所以我们来玩《永恒之主二》。Aora, a world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light. Aethys, resulting in his destruction, the country suffered from a plague of Hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher, one who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions, waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanen. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos. Ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected: that the ancient empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest. You retired to the castle of Cadnuma, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra. Where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. You finally don't have a slave. Oh, as a slave, we're going to be the slave. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep, lifting the curse. Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnaw at me, thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. That maybe the gods weren't finished with us. Oh. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories, 
You have been here before. You have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Watcher. A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. Wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an odd. Hmm. This one's really far. Okay. Merry gore, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Sit. Please. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cad Nua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorge head, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember.
Does everything appear to be in order? Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bereth. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty... The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? You prayed for my help in reaching Theos, beyond the court of penitence, and pledged yourself to me. And though you could have broken your pledge when you defeated Theos at Sun and Shadow, you did not. Admirable. She delicately places a card on the table, a bell in a tower. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they reach- You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Ognua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. Taking a physical form in Aeora is fraught with peril. Most mortal minds and bodies are incapable of containing divine power. It can lead to... problems, as Aethys learned not long ago. Her armored hand gingerly places a card sideways on the table. It features a man with a burst of light instead of a head. Good. Before you return to Aeora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life and death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind. Okay, copy. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling- A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. 
Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? Um, me. Me? You don't remember? Adair points at his face, which he seems to be arranging into his most recognizable expression. Res I'm the captain of this boat. And I was real big back in Deerwood. Had this keep called Cadnua. I was famous. And I was what you'd call a watcher. I'd Watch go around her. talking to dead folks and creeping out just about everyone who saw. He holds up his hands with fingers curled to mimic claws. You, you're just some farmer. Likes to follow me around. Take most of the beating for me when we get attacked. Don't worry, it'll all come back. Well, maybe it was you who was going around being a creepy watcher. I get mixed up easily. But that fortress was mine, I remember that. Anyway, you didn't answer my question. How you feeling? Alive's a big improvement. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. How could you know all that? You've been faking on us. He Misfortune's brewing topside with... Magrans fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale-sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Hengrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Okay. Make some use of it. of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Well, what have we here? A little sloop? Lost and alone in the storm? I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. 
I am a gentleman of fortune. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'll be quick. Why complicate this with a quarrel? I see. Oh. I'll take. It's as simple as that. Now then, me and my mates will be helping ourselves to your ship. There's no need to see her sunk by the stalls. Or my cold. Listen up, mates. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Play with the crew if you'd like. But don't bring me any prisoners. You had Chao 赶快求救 Defend the ship. You're so Storm's picking up. Take cover.
的在支持一个中正后路上的壮男，还蛮是雨水的甲板上就是越来越快。目前没有撞上你，却撞到了一个小叫叫做奇特化的甲板选手。浪子号的波浪天起，奇特化被甩了出。船旋转，他努力的抓住栏杆，但他的手指在打滑。他大声的寻求帮助。与此同时，他他的滑落的后舱已经到了甲板边缘，把塑胶滑从船外扔出。箱子前面的标示，意识到其中来装着来自于无牙堡的物资。先听一下声音怎么样。